Welcome to our Oilfield Water Services Field Case Study Series. My name is Ross McCartney and in this series I'll be showing you field examples of how produced water analyses can be used to benefit scale, water, well and reservoir management. For all these case studies, where they have been published, the reference for the work is given at the end of the presentation. In this presentation, you'll learn about how the composition of formation water being produced from a well was estimated from produced water analyses when the produced waters were mixtures of formation water and condensation water. This also allowed the rate of formation water flow into the well to be calculated. This information was then used by the asset to correctly assess the scale risks to the well, resulting in the avoidance of unnecessary scale mitigation costs. This example is from a gas condensate field, which we shall call field Y. Well A on this field was a vertical well that was perforated across two formations, formation 1 and formation 2. After the well had been on production for two years, a decision was made to re-perforate the well. During the re-perforation activities, a sample of white solid scale was recovered from the well. Analysis of the sample showed that it was predominantly aragonite with minor amounts of sulfate minerals, these possibly being celestite and or barite. A caliper log run in the well showed that there was scale buildup across the perforations of Formation 1, but not those of Formation 2. So it was inferred at the time that the scale sample had come from the Formation 1 perforations. This was a surprise to the acid because produced water samples from this well collected at the test separator were very low salinity and were thought to be benign and non-scaling. The acid wanted to better understand the cause of the scale build-up in the well and to determine what was required to mitigate scale in this well. So the produced water analyses were evaluated and this showed that the produced water was actually a mixture of condensation water and only a small amount of formation water. This explained why the produced water had such low salinity and why it appeared to be non-scaling. To understand the cause of scaling in the well, it was first necessary to simulate the production conditions in this well to calculate the scaling risks. But the composition of the formation water flowing into the well and its rate of flow were required for these calculations. Fortunately, formation water samples had been obtained from the reservoir. These were centrifuged from core samples and collected during MDTs. The figure shows the sodium overchloride ratio of these formation waters plotted against their chloride concentrations. The line is a regression line through these data. You can see that formation water compositions vary across the field and the formation water sodium overchloride ratio increases at lower salinities. The sodium overchloride ratio of formation water being produced from well A does not change when mixed with condensation water. So by comparing the average sodium overchloride ratio of the produced water samples with the regression line, it was possible to estimate the chloride content of the produced formation water. Using this and the iron ratios in the produced water, it was possible to reconstruct the complete produced formation water composition. And by comparing this with the produced water composition and using the produced water rates, the formation water rates could also be calculated. The formation water rates and composition were then used in production scaling risk predictions. These demonstrated that calcium carbonate scale was expected to deposit across the perforations of Formation 1 exactly as was being observed. The deposition was being caused by production of a small amount of formation water which was being partially evaporated as it entered the well via the perforations. Higher up the well, condensation was occurring which caused the formation water to be significantly diluted so there was no scale risk higher up in the well, nor in the test separator. So the study confirmed the cause of the scale, but was scale mitigation necessary? Well in this case, no it was not, because given the very low rate of production of formation water, the rate of accumulation of scale was also very low, in fact too low for scale mitigation to be required. This meant that the asset could avoid the costs associated with mitigation, which would have been significant. I hope this brief presentation has given you a greater insight into the value of produced water analyses. 
If you require further information, please visit our website at www.oilfieldwaterservices.co.uk where you will find our extensive publication list which cover many field cases. You can also contact me via my email on ross at oilfieldwaterservices.co.uk. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos from us on the uses of produced water and formation water analyses in the oil industry. Thank you for your attention and I hope that we can be of service to you soon.